it's very fitting that we're here today in Grosvenor Square. As Phil has already said, this is the US Embassy. What you might not know is that building directly behind you is the Canadian High Commission looking directly at the US Embassy. Now Canada is one of the biggest climate criminals around today. <laughs> They are gagging climate scientists, they are riding roughshod over indigenous people's rights, they are branding environmental NGOs as radical extremists. In the UN climate negotiations, no country has won the Fossil of the Day award for blocking climate action more than Canada. Canada has, over the years, Canada has won that more than any other country. Last year it pulled out of Kyoto because there's no chance that it's going to hit its emissions targets. And in the EU, Canada has launched this unprecedented lobbying push to essentially try and stall and undermine and block a key piece of EU climate legislation. Now why is Canada doing all these things? The answer is simple, it's the tar sands. Now the tar sands are, as Phil said, where the fossil fuel industry is taking us now that conventional sources of oil are running dry and getting harder to reach. Tar sands are not actually oil, they're a kind of sticky bitumen that's found in the ground that take a huge amount of water and energy, toxic chemicals, in order to turn it into oil that you can actually burn in your car. And this is where the oil industry is taking us. The tar sands industry in Canada is absolutely huge. It's the biggest industrial project in the world. It covers an area the size of England and Wales. The amount of oil it is extracting is 1.5 million barrels a day. And to do that, it is clear cutting and destroying the ancient boreal forest, which is the second uh, largest intact ancient forest in the world after the Amazon. It is digging up indigenous people's lands, it is polluting the water, it is polluting the air, it is polluting the ecosystem, it is driving indigenous communities away from their traditional way of life, it is poisoning people's water, people are getting sick and dying because of the tar sands. Not only that, it is a highly, highly carbon intensive way of getting oil. It, uh, the, the tar sands extract a lot more than conventional oil in terms of the, uh, sorry, emit a lot more than conventional oil in terms of the extraction process. And the plans are to expand the tar sands industry threefold uh, by 2030. Now, what all of this means, James Hansen, who Phil referred to, a very respected climate scientist from NASA, has calculated that if all the tar sands are extracted as planned, we have no hope of staying under a two degree temperature rise. He has called the tar sands game over for the climate. That is how significant it is because there's so much carbon locked up in there. So that's why we've got a problem with the Canadian High Commission and the Canadian government today. But I've actually got some really good news for you. Essentially, at the moment, the tar sands are landlocked. They're situated in northern Alberta, in the middle of the massive country of Canada. At the moment, nearly all of the tar sands oil is going to the US economy. But in order to expand threefold as they plan, they need to get to new markets. In order to get to new markets, they need to build pipelines. There are two major pipelines that Canada is trying to build at the moment. The first one, the Keystone XL pipeline, would take tar sands oil from Alberta all the way down to the Texas coast. The pipeline is nearly 2,000 kilometers long and it goes across you know, many, many thousands of people's land. There's been a huge movement of opposition in the US to the Keystone XL pipeline. Last year, the White House was surrounded constantly for 15 days. 1,250 people were arrested blockading the White House to stop the Keystone XL pipeline. And it actually influenced President Obama. He actually uh, blocked TransCanada, the, the Keystone XL company's um, application for the pipeline, which was really, really amazing, and it was a real victory for the people who'd been blockading the White House. 
But of course, Trans Canada started finding a way around that. So they decided they would build the southern part of the Keystone XL pipeline while they waited to try and reroute the northern part to connect it up to Canada and to try and find a different way of taking it. So what's happened in the last few weeks is this amazing direct action movement has sprung up in Texas called the Tar Sands Blockade. They have been blockading the bulldozers and the developers who are trying to get the southern portion of the Keystone XL pipeline built. The blockade, rolling blockade has been going on for 69 days. Loads of people have been arrested. As people are arrested, more people come in to take their place. People are sitting in trees. People are locking themselves to bulldozers. Two days ago, um, a friend of mine who actually came to the BP AGM with us a couple of years ago, Diane Wilson, locked herself um, to a construction truck. Uh, got arrested along with her friend Bob and has now begun a hunger strike in prison against the Keystone XL pipeline. The resistance that we're seeing in Texas is absolutely incredible. And can I just have a, a cheer of love and solidarity for the Tar Sands blockaders in Texas? <laughs> Meanwhile... Sorry! Meanwhile... They're also trying to build a pipeline west across Canada to the British Columbia coast so they can put tar sands oil in massive super tankers to export it to China. Now this is called the Enbridge Northern Gateway Pipeline and that pipeline would cross 200 Indigenous First Nations communities territories. And amazingly, every single one of those 200 different First Nations has united in opposition to the pipeline. They have said, we do not want this on our land. We do not want the money that Enbridge is offering us. We will take direct action if necessary once all of the legal avenues to us have, um, have run out. They have connected with a really strong environmental movement in British Columbia and they have resulted in so much resistance to the Enbridge Northern Gateway Pipeline that pundits are now saying it's not going to be built. So we have a huge cheer of love and solidarity for the Enbridge Blockade as well. So what does this mean? Amazingly, it means that because of people taking this kind of action, the tar sands remain landlocked. They cannot build the pipelines that will get them to new markets, which is the whole rationale for expanding. And as a result, the price of tar sands oil in the last few weeks has plummeted to $35, which is way below the amount where companies can actually make money. So suddenly, tar sands oil is not profitable because it's landlocked, and it's landlocked because of the environmental movement and First Nations working together to stop these pipelines being built. This is an incredible, incredible thing. I can't quite believe it. Even six months ago, I wouldn't have believed it. Now, it doesn't mean that we've won, because even yesterday, Enbridge um, filed uh, for a new pipeline to be built east across Canada. You know, they're going to keep trying, but the movement in North America is so strong on this now that this is the biggest blow that the tar sands industry has ever really experienced, and it's really, really encouraging. So I just wanted to deliver that piece of good news to you, because I know there's not a lot of good news to be had on climate change at the moment. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about where we fit in here in the UK. So first of all, some of the biggest players in the tar sands are actually British companies. BP is in there, and BP, as you'll know, their brand is plastered across many of our most loved cultural institutions, the Tate, the British Museum, the National Portrait Gallery, the Royal Opera House, the Natural History Museum. They're all sponsored by BP. Shell. Shell is the biggest extractor of tar sands in the whole industry, and it is currently trying to double its extraction. So, and all of this is taking place on the land of a First Nation called the Athabasca Chippewa First Nation, who are standing up to Shell and suing them to try and stop this expansion taking place. And we are working in solidarity with them to put pressure on Shell over here. Royal Bank of Scotland are the seventh largest financer of tar sands companies. So even though the tar sands extraction is taking place in Canada, a lot of the financial and corporate 
um, ties are actually here and a lot of the impetus is here. So we definitely have a role to play in this battle. But probably the biggest role we have to play is I've talked about trying to find new markets for the tar sands. Well, Europe is a key new market that Canada wants to export to. That's where the oil from the Keystone XL pipeline will go if that pipeline is built. It will come to Europe. And there's a piece of legislation going through the EU at the moment called the Fuel Quality Directive that would essentially label tar sands as more polluting, much more polluting than conventional oil and strongly discourage companies from importing tar sands oil into Europe because they wouldn't make so much money out of it. Now, Canada has launched the most unprecedented lobbying campaign. They've got to the UK government. The UK government is now blocking this legislation. They've got to the French government, they've got to the German government, they've got to the Dutch government. Interestingly, these are the countries that have the big oil companies in them, Shell, BP, Total, and so on. Um, but nevertheless, there's a huge amount of support for this amongst MEPs and amongst the European Commission. Now, the next vote is going to come up early-ish or towards the summer next year and we have a really important role to play to make sure that the UK government supports the fuel quality directive and keeps tar sands oil out of Europe because if we can close off the EU market to tar sands that is another blow for the business case for tar sands oil and that is why the Canadian government is lobbying so hard to stop this legislation being passed in the EU. We know how important it is to Canada and that's why it needs to be really important to us as well. So, if you want to find out more, be involved in the Tar Sands campaign, you can sign up to our email list, which is www.no-tar-sands.org, um, and we'll keep, keep you in touch with it. Um, but maybe we could just make a little bit of noise for both the US and the Canadians, just so they know we're here. So if I say shut down, you say Tar Sands, shut down! Tar Shut down! Tar I say climate, you say crimson! Dirty! 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 Dirty!